Lie down on the floor, relax your body and calm your breathing. Think of the asana poses. Every asana pose is related with a specific chakra or energy point. In this pose, we stay eight complete breaths. The inhalation is spontaneous, the exhalation is controlled and prolonged. The first pose is Sarvangasana or the shoulder stand. Lying on your back with your hands placed beside your body, relax and picture the asana first in your head. As you inhale, first raise your legs, bend at the knees, bringing them to your forehead. Lift the trunk in a vertical position and then straighten the legs. Bend your hands at the elbows and place your hands behind the ribcage to support your upper body. Push the chest forward until it presses against the chin. In the final position, the upper body and the legs are aligned in a straight vertical line. Try to adjust yourself and to find the most comfortable position. The weight should be distributed between the shoulders and the lower part of the neck, pressing on the spot which connects the body to the neck. This is where the Vishuddhi Chakra is. Imagine on this spot a blue ball. Make eight deep, complete breaths, breathing through this ball. Do not overburden your neck with too much pressure. Control the pressure with your elbows and shoulders. After eight breaths, step out of this position, slowly and gently, with controlled movement. Rest a few breaths in Shavasana, the corpse pose. The next pose is the plow. Picture the asana first in your mind. By inhalation, slowly, raise your legs using your hands as a support. Bring your feet above your head and place them on the floor behind your head. Straighten your knees, but do this slowly without any discomfort. Do not go beyond your limits. You can stay in this position, but you can also try to outstretch your arms behind your head and with your fingers to touch your toes. Stay in this position for eight deep and conscious breaths, breathing through the Manipura, the chakra on the spine behind the navel area. On this spot, imagine a yellow ball. The first four breaths we do in this position and the next four in mudra position. After the fourth breath, bring your knees beside your ears and embrace your thighs above your head. Try to make yourself as much comfortable as it gets and make four deep conscious breaths from this position. After the 8th breath, we step slowly out of this position by raising the legs and bringing them back in the start position. Relax in the corpse pose, few breaths thinking about the Manipura Chakra. The next asana is called bridge. Picture the asana first in your mind. Then bend your legs at the knees, putting the feet on the floor in a shoulder distance. Raise your arms and bend them at the elbows, placing your hands next to your ears with the fingers facing down towards your feet. From this position, raise your waist using your feet and hands as a support. Do this very slowly. Arch the spine and move the head towards the back as much as possible. With this asana, the whole spine is stretched, including the hips and the shoulder joints. Think again of the Manipura Chakra. On the spine, 
behind the navel where the vertebras are most tightened during this pose. Imagine a yellow bow on this place and breathe through it deep conscious breaths. After the eighth breath, lower your waist to the floor slowly and gently. Straighten your legs and bring your arms next to your body. Relax in Shavasana for a couple of breaths, thinking of Manipura Chakra. Continue with the fish pose. See the pose first mentally in your mind. Sit in Vajrasana pose and from this pose lean your trunk behind slowly, arching your spine, using your elbows as a support until you reach the floor with the top of your head. In the beginning use the elbows as a support for this position, placing your hands on the side of the lower back. Try to relax your legs and thighs. If you feel confident enough, Bring your palms together and place them in the middle of the chest. If this position is too difficult for you in the beginning, here is another variation of this pose. In this variation, we start directly from the corpse pose without going in the Vajrasana pose like we did in the previous variation. From this position, just arch the spine from the waist up to the neck. Move your head backwards till you can and find spot for support on the top of your head. Use your arms, bend at the elbows, supporting your lower back with your hands placed on the lower back above your hips. The breathing in this position is clavicular, using the upper portion of the lungs and the base of the neck. Stay in this position for 8 breaths. Breathe through the Anahata Chakra or the Heart Chakra. Imagine a green ball on the spine behind the middle of the chest bone. Step slowly out of this position and lie on the floor in Shavasana position. Relax completely and think of the Anahata Chakra. The next two asanas are activating the second chakra or Svadhisthana. It is placed on the sacral joint. Picture the asana first in your mind and then go into the pose. Stretch your arms above your head. Inhale, lift your upper body along with the arms until you come in a vertical position with your arms and trunk in the same line. Now bend forward with your trunk lowering the arms and place your hands on the legs below or above the knees depending on where your limits are. With your trunk Bend further down with your hands sliding along the legs. In the final position you should touch your feet and your trunk should be completely bent at the waist lying flat over your legs. The knees should be straightened. This pose requires a great flexibility of your spine. Do not go over your limits. With the time the back will become more and more flexible. Bend down until you feel a nice stretch and pressure in the sacral joint. Stay in this position 8 breaths. In the sacral joint, imagine an orange ball and breathe through it. With each exhalation, try to relax more your sacral joint and to bend even further down. After the 8th breath, lift your body slowly and lie back down in the start position. Relax with a few breaths.
Now stretch one arm above your head. It can be the left arm or the right arm and roll over that side. Lie on your stomach and relax in the new position. Breathe deeply and relax the stomach and the back muscle. This pose is also for the second chakra, the sacral chakra. Put your head on the forehead. Straighten your arms behind your back and interlock your fingers. By inhalation, raise your upper body, arching your spine backwards. Use the back muscles and feel the pressure in the navel area. Move your head backwards and squeeze the shoulder blades together. With exhalation, slowly return to the starting position. Do this two more times before you go into cobra position. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and then exhale. After the third time, place your hands under your shoulders, inhale and lift your body. Stay in this position for eight deep breaths, breathing through the orange ball at the sacral area. After the 8th breath, slowly return to the beginning position. Relax in Shavasana for a couple of breaths. The next pose is the Locust or the Shalabhasana. Imagine this pose first in your mind and then go into the pose. Position your head with the chin on the floor. Place your hands next to your hips. Warm up the body before you go into a locust pose. Breathe in, raise your left leg up, breathe out, put your leg back in the start position. Breathe in, lift your right leg, breathe out, bring your leg on the floor again. This is one round. Do one more. With the next inhalation, lift both legs up and stay in this position. Use your chin and hands as a support. Breathe 8 breaths through the blue ball on the lower neck where the neck and the body are connected. After the 8th breath, slowly return to the start position. Relax with couple of deep breaths. Continue with the Nura Asana or the Bow Pose. Picture the Asana first in your mind. Then bend your legs at the knees and grasp your ankles with the hands and place your head with the forehead on the floor. With a few conscious breaths, relax in the new position. Inhale and arch your spine backwards using your arms and legs to assist the raising of your body. Exhale and lower the body, returning into the start position. Do this two more times as a preparation of the bow pose. Inhale, Exhale. After the third breath, stay in this position for eight breaths. 
thinking of the Vishuddhi Chakra, the blue ball in the lower part of your neck. After the 8th breath, release the pose slowly, return in the beginning position. Relax with a couple of deep breaths. For the next pose, sit on the floor with your legs in front of your body. This is the half spinal twist. Picture the asana first in your mind. Bend your left leg at the knee and place your left foot under your right buttocks. Place your right foot on the outside of the left thigh. Then twist your body and place your left shoulder against the right knee on the outside of your right leg. Then either you drag your left arm through the space under your right knee, or if that is too difficult, place your left hand on your right foot holding the ankle. Bring your right arm as far behind as possible. Place it either on the floor or grab your left hand if you manage to drag it through. Use the left arm as a lever against the right leg to twist the trunk and the neck as much as possible without the use of the back muscles. Make sure that your left armpit is above the right thigh, close to the right knee. It shouldn't be placed above the right shin. Keep your back as straight as possible. Stay in this position for 8 breaths. Breathe through the Ajna Chakra, the white ball in the center of the head. After the eighth breath, slowly release this position. Now we bend the right leg, we bring the left leg over the right leg and we twist to the right side. Stay in this position for eight breaths, breathing through Ajna, and then release the position. The last asana in our program is Sirshasana or the headstand. This is one of the most popular and beneficial asanas also referred as the king of all asana. Despite the fact that this asana can seem a little bit difficult to perform, it is a very easy asana. The main trick for this asana is to find the gravity center in your body and then use it in your advantage. Start in Vajrasana position. Bend forward in a rapid pose. Make triangle by placing your hands in front of you. Interlock your fingers. Place your head on the floor on your forehead just where the hairline begins, slightly below your hands. Straighten your knees and your head will automatically roll until the top of the head is on the floor and the back of your head is supported from your clasped hands. The triangle formed from your forearms and the position of the head are very important because this is the base and the support for this asana. So pay attention to this part. When you have found stable position, with your feet on the floor, walk as much as you can towards your head. 
In this position, think of your head and try to find the center of the gravity in your body. The eyes should be open. Now slightly pull your hips and bring them in the same line like your neck and spine. In this phase, you also lift your feet from the floor, bend at the knees and close to your chest. And from this step on, you use only the triangle of your arms as a support for this position. Do not raise your legs immediately. Give yourself time to adjust to this new position. Then lift your both knees using your abdominal muscles and straighten your legs. Do not make too much pressure on the head. The weight should be mostly distributed between your forearms. To step out of this position, bend your legs at the knees and bring the knees to your chest. Do this slowly with controlled movement. Place your feet on the floor. As you reach the floor with your feet, go directly in rabbit pose and rest in this position for a couple of breaths. <laughs> 